Combo, a disappointing night. Your thoughts on that performance? Uh, not good enough. Um, you know, we, we felt that it was going to be a wicket with lots of runs. The last time they played on it, there was 200 each way. Obviously, it probably been under the covers for a fair while, and we got caught out. You know, and unfortunately, a couple of times this year, when we haven't played on great wickets, I think we haven't adapted and problem solved quickly enough, and we hence we get ourselves in trouble you know we, we fought our way back at five for 97 or something five overs to go you think yeah, you know with our finisher as well still to come you know we could post something because obviously we we back ourselves to defend um, but young leg spinner came on and was absolutely brilliant and uh, knocked us over and uh, the rest was history winning the toss and letting to butt you obviously didn't expect the pitch to be as tough as it was. No, because, you know, it's a used wicket, so you probably don't want to be, you know, batting last on it. That, that was our thoughts. And, you know, historically, it's a great ground to bat. Um, so, yeah, well, look, I'm not going to nail the pitch because I thought it was... It, it gave some assistance to the spinners, as we saw. Um, but if you got in, you can make runs. And, you know, I, I, I'm not a sort of coach, you know that, that... I don't play the blame game. We will look within about our performance and we were caught out, as simple as that. So the beauty of this competition and also <laughs> the worst part about this competition, with less than 24 hours, we go again. So we'll have a chance to put it right. Um, but we have to control our own destiny in this competition. We have to win our last three games. It's as simple as that. And if we do that, we probably deserve a spot in the top, top four. Yeah, that's two defeats now. Off the bounce, what were your messages to the lads after that after that result there? Um, geez, without going too deep, um, playing finals is tough, and sometimes if there's a house on fire, you actually got to run into the house and to save someone. You got to run into the fire, and that's what I expect my team to do. And I reckon today we probably didn't. So I expect tomorrow there's going to be a burning building at Riverside and you're going to see 11 blokes charging towards the front door. Just a word on Nathan Salter. He continues to bowl superbly, doesn't he? Word on him? Uh, mate, brilliant. Uh, was under a massive injury cloud coming into this game. Um, to be honest, I expected him to be out for the next week or so, but uh, thankfully his calf injury was not as bad as first thought. Um, and again, he just shows his skill set we all know that leg spinners are uh, such important pieces of, of our puzzle. We've changed our whole side this year to accommodate more spin. And he is our keystone, of, like he's the cornerstone of what we're all about. And I just think there's bigger things for Nathan Souter. I just get that feeling if someone takes a chance, and when I say someone, I'm talking about the England white ball coach who likes him. It's not the worst thing to have a couple of leg spinners up your sleeve. And I know you've got Adil Rashid up here, but Nathan South is fast growing a great reputation for himself. You touched on it before, big game tomorrow against Notts Outlaws. How important is it that we, we bounce back and try and get back, get back to winning ways? Well, the, the, there's no choice. You know, we can either accept mediocrity and be sixth or seventh at the end of the year and go, oh yeah, poor us, or we go like I say, jump into that burning building and, you know, knock it down. And I know this team is a good one, T20 side. I know it in my heart of hearts. And I've no doubt over the next three games we'll show that.